I think it's very important to know that no matter what games you play first and like or dislike, there, there is a game for everybody. I sincerely believe the fact that there is Absolutely. a game for every single person. I think, honestly, find what you think would be fun. Welcome to Friends in the Corner Podcast, stories and topics from around Kentucky. I'm your host, Dan Polly, coming to you from beautiful Lexington, Kentucky. Happy to be with you guys again for another wonderful episode of Friends in the Corner. And whether this is your first time or you've been around for a long time, be sure to check us out on social media. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at FITC Podcast. You can also subscribe to us on a number of different listening platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Pandora, iHeartRadio, YouTube. YouTube, you name it, we're probably on it. And if you want to keep in touch with the show, be sure to email us at friendsinthecorner at gmail.com. That's friendsinthecorner, all together lowercase, at gmail.com. As summer starts to approach here, it's a great time to be in Kentucky as things start to look like they're coming back to normal, God willing. We've started to see new directions with CDC guidelines in regards to people who've gotten their vaccine. And we've gotten to uh, see different things that are starting to happen down the road because God willing, on June 11th, we're going to start transitioning away from those COVID guidelines that have been put in place for a little over a year now. And hopefully we can start to see the state of Kentucky starting to go back to normal. And I personally cannot wait to go out and enjoy the summer once more. Regardless, though, I hope that you'll continue to make Friends in the Corner podcast a part of your listening experience this summer. And along with that, I have something that you guys can enjoy for both your listening and visual experience this summer here as well, as I welcome on my guest today, Max and Doolin of Table Knots. Now, Table Knots is a YouTube channel centered around board games. And Max and Doolin have been doing this show for a little over six months now. And in those six months, they've talked about different board games that they like. They've reviewed board games, reviewed Kickstarters, and done a bunch of cool things on this show. And over the last six months, they've seen a lot of growth in the show because of it. Um, and I just wanted to have these guys on just to talk about that success that they've had, about that growth that they had with this new channel, and just give some advice that they would give to people that want to get into board game collecting or content creating in general. So this was a really fun show to record with both Max and Doolin. I was really excited to have both these guys on. And I say without further ado, let's just get right into it. So ladies and gentlemen, Max and Doolin of Table Knots. Um, we're going to be talking to Doolin and Max from uh, Table Knots here, and happy to have you guys in. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. We Absolutely. really Absolutely. Happy yeah. to be here. <laughs> well, b- before we jump into this interview, um, I got to say one, one reason why I'm excited to talk to you guys today is this is actually the first interview I've gotten to do in person in over a year <laughs> since since the pandemic started. So I've done most of them through Zoom and out, and with my main guest. And so you, I, I'm very honored that I get to sit with you guys. We're all vaccinated. That's yeah, true. And, Absolutely. And of course, we're like really famous people. So yeah. Like yeah. Really, like, just a huge honor for you, especially. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's like <laughs> rolled out the red carpet, filled up the fridge and everything. That's right. So, yeah. But no, it's awesome to talk to you guys. So I'm happy to have you guys here. Welcome Thank to the you. show. Absolutely. It's good to be here. Awesome. So Dylan and Max um, have started a YouTube channel, uh, started a couple months ago. That's gotten some traction here. And we just want to dive into that here on the show. So uh, we'll start off with some of the easy questions for you guys first. Um, who are you guys and where are you from? You want to go first? Max? Sure. Yeah. That? My name is Max. Uh, I live in Frankfort, Kentucky. I was born in Louisville, but moved to Frankfurt when I was three, so I've been there my whole life. Uh, I am a father. Okay, you, uh, I'll move on. I am a father <laughs> of three, uh, three children at three or under. So it's been pretty. Oh my god! Wild. God, yeah, my god oldest is three. My middle will be two in August. My youngest is three months today. Actually, do you uh, sleep? A little. Okay. A little. Yeah. A he little. He doesn't. He doesn't. Really. <laughs> Not as much as I'd like to, but enough. Enough. Uh, I. For my hobbies, I am a father and then predominantly play games, whether that be board or video, but mostly board games these days. And that's probably all the really interesting things there's to tell about me. I don't live a very wild life with three children. (laughs) (laughs) 
There was a, I watched the video the other day. It was like you guys' thank you video you put yeah. out. Mm-hmm. And all three, you holding all three kids there. <laughs> and a, yeah, they, they hopped in in the last few minutes. They like to make things interesting. And, and how many animals is that as well? On uh, top of four, all? four animals as well. Yeah, two dogs, two cats, three kids, and a housemate. A whole Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Here's the story. That's right. Of a That's right. Nice. <laughs> So, Doolin, yeah. not that anyone cares, but go ahead and tell us about Thank you. Thank you so much, Max. I really appreciate that. <laughs> no, uh, in fact, the reason I know you is through my wife uh, of, of wow, I was about to say four years, but it's almost five. It's all, It'll be five Wow, not five yet? I'm no. five. Yeah, I know. I know. It'll be in June. Uh, but my wife and you both went to UK together at yeah. the same time, uh, and I went to Campbellsville University, which is actually where same. Max and I both went, mm-hmm. but it wasn't where we met <laughs> we didn't like <laughs> each other at all <laughs> in fact i didn't even know max really existed i knew of his wife but that was not many it. people did yeah <laughs> but uh yeah i i moved back to frankfurt when i got married and uh am a youth pastor i've been a youth pastor for uh almost five years now uh, like the same amount of time i've been married and uh yeah i don't really was it through mccoin who was yeah. our third party person yeah mccoin was our japan. other table night until he decided that living in japan was cooler than being friends with us yeah <laughs> uh, but fortunately he at least introduced us to each other to yeah. carry on the channel yeah yeah well, that's awesome yeah and that like uh Dylan was saying yeah so i knew his wife in college and Yes. Since then, I've seen Doolin a few times here and there, and uh, the main thing is we follow, follow each other on Facebook, and that's how I first came across y'all's content as Table Knots, and um, it's a really cool channel that you guys have started, and I just want to dive into this a little bit, because it's centered around your guys' passion for board games, and so kind of, what was the nucleus that got this all started for you guys to be like, hey, we're going to make a board game YouTube channel? I, you know what? I want to I wanna tag this first, because... Okay. I was going through some old like Facebook messages. Uh, my wife was doing it first, and she was pulling up like really awful ones when I was in like ninth grade that I messaged her with, <laughs> which are like poorly written and horrible. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we had some that I saw because we we've not messaged each other on Facebook since we started becoming friends. It's probably true. And and Max reached out to me because we had played board games together a few times. He knew that I had done like a little bit of video editing in college, and uh, it's just like really, really funny messages where he's like, "Hey, like I have this idea of this like, and, I, and, and if you don't like it, like just, just let me know, like like you know, like being real like coy with it, and like almost like you're like asking me on a date type of." Like, oh, message. I was. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you want us to know, that's fine, but just <laughs> hear me out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, there was a lot of like, and and. and and if you don't want to do it, it's okay. Like, uh, and I obviously was like, yeah, I mean, we, we can look into that. Like, uh, let's do that. And uh, that turned into like six or seven months of what is this going to be? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we were just like, let's we, we, start. Yeah. Let's just make some content and put it out there and see if anybody likes it. And I don't know. It's been apparently weird. some people do. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about that many, but yeah, a handful. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, we grow, but like it, it is weird how I don't know. We, I didn't expect the growth that we've had. No, at the neither did I. Yeah. Well, and I know you're a youth pastor, so you know that that keeps you busy and stuff like that. Sure. But Max, I have no idea how you have the time with your life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> it's just like, you, you I got, don't either. You, what's that like Harry Potter thing that like divides the their time turner? Their time turner. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I work a full time job. And then I come home and I basically am just with the kids until they're asleep. There are a couple of days like today where I came out over here before they're asleep. So Danielle's taking it all by herself. But uh, then God bless you, Danielle. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I mean, she's the main reason. I mean, I don't I don't have that much time. What I what time I do have, I try and dedicate to the channel for the most part. But uh, she does a really good job at allowing me to do that. I mean, some nights I don't hang out with her much at all because I got to go record and edit a couple of videos, stuff like that. So, uh, I mean, without her approval, I mean, this certainly wouldn't be a thing. I just wouldn't have the the time or availability to do so, but uh, it works out all right. And it's not something that, I mean, it's certainly time sensitive and, and it requires time, but it's not something that requires, you know, four hours a day to do at least where we are right now it's just our passion project so Mm -hmm. i mean if it became a bigger thing of course we'd have to put in more time but as it stands it it leaves a little room for flexibility we don't have any 
real deadlines we have to hit and things that have to be up by this certain day to an extent we do but not 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 with real consequences so uh, it allows us a little bit of flexibility yeah it's huge thanks to our wives who oh God, put yeah. up with us and they're they're regulars on the show uh, i see so oh you, absolutely you'll, you'll yeah we love to have them on all the wives all the kids all the <laughs> all the cats <laughs> yep. yeah it's a whole family affair yeah. <laughs> and my my cat uh sometimes cameos on my uh show as well so you'll hear her meow and jingle and oh stuff yeah like that, so. gotta love it yeah keeps it keeps it down to earth please. so so where did the name uh table knots come from i don't really know that was an interesting one yeah i mean it was doolin who came up with it we that was my goodness that was the hardest thing i think we've we done. spent weeks just <laughs> thinking about names we, yeah we started with uh yalrus 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 was our gonna be a picture of a walrus name. Like with a sweet tea, with a sweet tea, and like that's very a flannel. Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We were trying to lean into that, but um, I mean, neither Doolin nor I are particularly country, I would say. <laughs> no. uh, but yeah, we got some feedback on that uh, name, which was not so amazing. <laughs> no. So we went back to the drawing board. Um, I think it had something to do with my love for Psychonauts, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, I I actually watched a video and I was like, you know, that is a clever name, like. Just the idea of what's uh, Psychonauts? Psychonauts is a is a older video game. Yeah, it's a video game that originally launched on the PlayStation Two. Yeah, okay. and um, it's an idea of like what like there's an ash like an, you're an astronaut of the psyche, I guess, of the brain. You could say it like that. Yeah, yeah. it's a basically a camp for children where they learn to control their psychic powers and stuff like that uh, and eventually become secret agents. I mean, it's, you know, it's an obscure game for sure, but it's one of my favorite video games of all time. And I, I think that you were watching it. Was it a fun house video? Yeah. Yeah. And Which, Funhouse is a YouTube channel that we both really seem to like. But We've honestly based a lot of our editing style off of... Too. Oh, yeah. A lot of so, our content has been jacked from them. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, no, totally plagiarized. 100% yeah. stolen. Don't, what are you doing? <laughs> this Confessions. Is, so this is how the channel got, gets taken yes. down. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. They, that, that thought of, you know, with board games, and we're both still fairly new to the hobby. I mean, obviously outlookers might like the normal person would be like no you're not you're like very dedicated you're, you're in you're deep yeah. yeah but like people who have board game channels have been doing this for even over a, a decade, decade yeah. you know and yeah. we're definitely not that way we get excited in every single video because we're discovering new things and i i just i don't know the idea of uh an astronaut being a person who just is exploring something that they're excited about well, see, man, I didn't even know that. That's yeah, way deeper that's than that. Right there, I thought yeah. you just were like, hey, they talked about Psychonauts. Max likes Psychonauts. What's no, the thing that has to do with the table? There we go. <laughs> uh, new grounds and stuff wow. on the table. That has a much deeper meaning to me now. <laughs> I appreciate you. you. <laughs> that's for the next video. I was that's like, where right. does it come from? We might have to. I had no idea. <laughs> so, genuinely. Well, uh, Yalris was... Uh, kiboshed pretty easily but i you all should keep that on your back pocket just for oh we will down the in case we break up i will become the <laughs> yeah. what was the other one that yeah. we almost did i was, was gonna like say our, was there a list there was like uh two of our animals names oh uh yeah what was that what was your green like oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 my green blue tongue or my blue tongue skink uh what was his name skippy Skippy. We were Skippy and Nacho. Skippy and Nacho. That was the other channel name we had, but we didn't want to be called Skippy or Nacho individually. <laughs> who, would, so. who would be Skippy and, not, and who would be Nacho? I'd probably be Skippy. Yeah. If only for the fact that that would be our animals where they originated <laughs> yeah. from. I don't know if Skippy. Skippy might still be alive. I gave him to Peaks Mill Elementary School a long time ago. So. It's, it, no. Probably not. No yeah. <laughs> you give an animal to an elementary school, it's gone. Just kidding. Lord, well, Table Knots is uh, definitely something uh, of a, a really great name, and as we've talked about how the center of this, and you've talked about how you were inspired by other um, by other YouTube channels that do a similar layout, and that's the kind of the thing that kind of interests me is because this is a genre of YouTube I'm not familiar with. You know, you hear about video games, uh, YouTube's, you can look all over for you, uh, video, YouTube video game channels. I'm a big wrestling fan. There's a big wrestling community on YouTube, but t board games is just one of those things. I feel like it's there, but it's still a very niche audience. That's Absolutely. not as it big is. Videos. Yeah, I think that, and I, I'm, I might butcher these numbers, so I'm not 100 percent sure, but I believe that like the 2020, you know, uh, the money that was made off of the two 
off of board games and video games. I believe it was something along the lines of 180 billion or something that was made off of video games, whereas 13 billion off of board games, mm-hmm. which is still obviously a pretty decent sized thing, but nowhere near, nowhere comes close to the money that video games brings in. So it's definitely a smaller, more niche community than that. I, I do, and I've been telling this to people who ask about it. Um, I do think it's on the rise. Oh, it is uh, 100%. Because, because board games in general, which is so funny because, you know, technology just keeps going for further and further, but we've seen a growth in like Dungeons and Dragons and mm. the popularity of even celebrities mentioning themselves playing Dungeons and Dragons or just the the rise of board game popularity in general. Like you can even just tell in Kentucky based on walking into the aisle at Walmart of board games it used to just be like four or five and then all action figures but now it's a entire row and i just i've seen the love for it grow but the content created for it not so much yeah i think that the you know the more technology technology becomes a, a, a standard part of our lives the more it's introduced and worked into every single thing we do there also becomes a desire to get away from that and so as much as someone wants to go play video games the more i started staring at a screen at work all day the less i wanted to go home and play video games the more i wanted that personal experience with someone else at a table you're not looking at your phone you're playing with physical components in your hand yeah. and you're looking at each other and talking with each other right across the table so i think that the more our The more we get into that realm, the more we will also see some people want to get away from it for our hobbies and our leisure activities. For sure. Uh, You mentioned, Doolin, just a minute ago here that you said that you see the popularity of it growing, but the content not. So do you guys notice, like, are they just, is like it the same gains with new paint, basically, type of deal, would you say? No, not at all. Um, I would say that, I mean, that is a thing, but I mean, it's the same thing you know, video games do it too. Yeah. Um, there's, there's tons of new games with new ideas and breaking new grounds all the time. Um, I think it's just content creation in general for something like board games is different than content creation for something like video games. For something like video games, you need a, a good computer Mm. or a graphics card or something. (laughs) Um, and then, I mean, you can make content. There's free programs on the PC. A lot of the games can be free. You can stream on Twitch for free. All that stuff, whereas getting into board game or other media content creation can be a little more inaccessible. It costs Mm -hmm. more money to get started. You need an actual camera or a phone with a good quality lens. You need, you know, the actual board games themselves, which oftentimes will cost far more than video games. Um, And there's not really any free board games. I mean, you can go and download free video games left and right, but downloading can't download free board games. So I think the barrier to entry is a lot higher for content creation in the board game community and and any kind of physical media. Whereas in video games, it's a little bit easier to get started. And I think that is uh, definitely a detriment. I don't know that you can fix it, but as far as for growing the community, it's just a lot less accessible. Right. Yeah. I would also say that it's tougher. Like with a video game, when you're watching somebody play a video game, there's just a lot more going on on the screen. Mm-hmm. And like you'll see like the kill numbers pop up and like you'll get excited for the player and they don't really even have to be saying something. Whereas what we do, like I'm really, I, I would love us at three, but I would never do this by myself. Mainly just It'd because be it's a lot of improv work yeah. in all honesty. I, and, and that's something that's also just been a huge part of my like love for this is... It's, it's a lot of like coming up with jokes on the fly. It's coming up with like, uh, like, and, and at the same time, it's just us having fun. But like, right. you know, a lot of it is you got to be hype. You got to create the excitement yeah. for something that otherwise wouldn't have it. You know, if that makes yeah. sense. It's not necessarily the most entertaining thing in the world <laughs> to watch someone just play a board game. Yeah. yeah. It definitely. But I like that challenge though. Oh, me too. Yeah. yeah. But there's certainly a disconnect from video games where, like you said, I mean, better creators will be better entertainers, no doubt, but the video games do at least kind of control the space and give you something to watch and pay attention to yeah. while the person doesn't have to be on or entertaining. And in board games, there's a lot less to look at. There's a lot less pretty, <laughs> exciting things. Once you get into them, though, I mean, we think that new board games are extremely beautiful and exciting to look at and yeah. stuff. So. But for the average person, definitely. <laughs> it's like, all right. Yeah, I, I remember watching, yeah, this was like a few years ago. It was Vin Diesel playing D&D. And I mean, yeah. it was kind of BA watching him, you know, narrate it and stuff like that. But at the same time, after oh, was like, he like the dungeon master, like the guy who it, yeah, told the story? Yeah, and he was. I got to see this. Yeah, it was 
it, and it was cool, but like after 15 minutes, I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, it certainly has to. Yeah, it, it requires a certain person to yeah. want to sit there and watch <laughs> that stuff. So you guys kind of mentioned that this has kind of become a newer hobby for you guys. So what what is it that got you guys into uh, board games? Um, you want me to go first? Sure. All right. I would say. I don't know. I've been into video games for so long, and I love that. I love just competitive stuff. I love having fun. But uh, when I, as I get older, I guess, and I don't want to say I'm an old person just yet, but how old I, are you? Twenty seven. Oh, I just turned thirty. You got some time. Okay, man, okay. So. I, Y'all are old. <laughs> how old are you? Twenty six. Twenty six. Yeah, yeah. You're twenty six with three kids, dude. God bless you, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know. It, it's what Max was getting into earlier, which is getting together off of the screen sitting around with people is just a way better way of making friends and and that's primarily the reason i played games like video games i rarely played single player stuff i played with friends and uh, use it as a way to connect and board games do that way better in my opinion i I, like uh i i think my best way of selling it to a person who's really into video games is you know how excited you get when your friend jumps online and into your party well what if you were just sitting with them and you could see their face and you could see their reactions to everything like that is way better to me i guess yeah i agree I yeah i think that you know I'm, I'm basically the same thing i mean we both love video games even still to this day there's nothing wrong with that but um yeah i just enjoy the the camaraderie and the, the friendship that can be really cultivated just in front of each other i mean i'm a social person and as much as video games are fun talking on a mic is great but being around someone and reading their body language and reacting and, you know, eating food, whatever it may be that brings that social experience together is just way more engaging than I can't see your face. I can only hear your voice and we're playing on a screen. You know, it, it's just a different kind of experience yeah. for me. And I still love them both. But, yeah, just getting into board games was, was what I wanted for that. Have you played very many board games? Like, <laughs> so how much experience do you have? I got a little bit. So we had a few board games on our uh, wedding registry. I got married last year. Oh, congratulations. Uh, thank you. I'm going to tell you how they're all bad games. Oh, probably. <laughs> I'm just joking. I, I'm just kidding. I, I let my wife put them on. Uh, so in college, me and your wife, uh, Doolin, we were involved in a church group that was really into board games. And there yeah. was an echelon of people there that um, were really into them. They played Settlers all the time. And... Um, a, a ton of other things, and I, I'll, and maybe not board games, uh, but growing up, I'm from I'm originally from Ohio, which is a scar on my life. But um, <laughs> I don't know how much y'all know about Ohio, but euchre is like yeah. a big deal up there. I I hate euchre. I yeah. freaking hate <laughs> euchre. But uh, so I had to grow up there. So I, I kind of like eased away from it. But like growing up, I I played Risk. Risk was one of my favorite games. Um, we have Sellers of Catan and uh, our uh, that was on our registry. Yeah. Uh, Bananagrams. We got a Scrabble. We All got good games. Scrabble's classic. Yeah, Scrabble's Scrabble, great. The old school man. You got the OG. Scrabble's just area control with words. Yeah, yeah. it's true. <laughs> uh, we got a battleship in there, which is a classic. And then uh, my wife, she's more into video games because we got she's got friends that are really into it. She showed me this one that's kind of interactive with an app. It's called. One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, 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 that's a fun game. We've worn the crap out of that game. And yeah, it, it, get a few drinks in you and play it with your friends, and it's the best time ever. You're like, no, you're like, I'm the werewolf. It's like, no, you're the werewolf. <laughs> Those social games are incredible. Yeah. yeah. And now that COVID's at this point kind of over, and now we, you can start doing this a little bit yeah. more. And if anybody's a fan of One Night, like, I feel like that game's popularity has caused just a huge influx of that style of game. Mm-hmm. So there's so oh, yeah. much to choose from. Of there that are. Kind of yeah, there's tons of that available. Oh, I forgot one. Um, Exploding Kittens. Okay. I remember yeah, when yeah. that came That's out. That's a big one, yeah. I remember when the Kickstarter was coming out on that, and I and I wanted to give money to it, but I was poor in college. So I didn't you have a chance to give money to Wait, it. Wait, you guys aren't poor anymore? No, I'm still kind of. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but he's not in college anymore. But not in that's college. Yeah. He's more time on his he, We're sitting in my studio, and I have my college degree up there that I'm still paying for to this day. So <laughs> yeah. That's always fun. Yeah. So, but yeah, so that that's kind of my background. So I wouldn't say I'm the biggest board game person compared to like you guys. I've seen you guys play a ton here, but it's kind of, it, it's fun. Like we get friends together and we play a few different games and, um, you know, I, 
it's good when you have a good game. I, the one that probably killed me growing up, the one that like I really just – after this, I just couldn't get into board games anymore. Was Monopoly? Monopoly, yep. yeah. I hate too Monopoly long. Too. Three. I can't do four hours of a board game. I mean, I get that people like it, and it's totally fine. You're allowed. It's valid. But also, most people play it wrong. This is a good time to admit to you that I am okay with Monopoly. I hate Monopoly. It's Danielle's favorite game, though. But what, her favorite game. Well, that's that's because I don't let her play it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Monopoly's fine. It's totally valid if you love Monopoly. But I do think that a lot of people play it wrong, and it extends it to like four hours plus, and yes. that just makes it miserable for everybody. Yeah, you're sitting there. I'm just like, after, I, I I want a game like we can get one done in like thirty minutes max, mm-hmm. and yeah. then and I I have no qualm with long games. Neither do Lenore. I do. We we played a. Six hour game of Twilight Imperium one time. That our was favorite great. Favorite games are pretty long. Yeah, our favorite games are quite long, but uh, you know, it opens up more opportunities for experiences. But in general, Monopoly is a little rough. So this kind of segues into a good question I want to ask you guys. And I, 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 I asked you guys before this, it's like, can you all name your top five uh, favorite board games of all time, each of you? And Max brought up a good point that we'll, this podcast might turn into a five-hour show. Yeah, it's yeah, going to be longer long than Monopoly. <laughs> we actually just <laughs> recorded our top 22, like each. 20. 20. Not 22. Twi- well, tw- two <laughs> uh, as well. In a podcast <laughs> format that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but we, uh, we're splitting that into two videos because it's <laughs> just so long. There's an hour for each 10. Oh each my 10. God. Yeah, so it was, it we will was not do that. Sorry. To you. We promise. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we came to a uh, consensus here and we've decided to narrow it down to your top three each. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so maybe there'll be some crossover. I don't know, but, um, we'll, we'll start with, uh, Duel and we'll start with you. What's your top three, uh, favorite games? Okay. That, so. Three number three is Cosmic Encounter, which yes. is a really great. Um, it's a great party game, and which and it, it, it like it's, it's a weird heavy to say yeah. party game. Like it's great to have a group. You have to have a group of people who's willing to talk and kind of pick on each other. Mm-hmm. If you have like friends who are really close, this is one of the best games you can break out. Uh, but it's essentially you are each an alien that is trying to. Take, take over, over yeah. a certain number of planets of all of your teammates huh. or fr- opponents, friends, not yeah. teammates. And uh, essentially, each alien you draw from just a large deck of cards, and they each have their own powers. But you flip over a card, find out where you're going to attack, and you have your stack of alien ships, and they have their stack of alien ships, and you send them out. And the best part of the game is then both players get to ask everyone else at the table. All right, do you want to partner with me and attack this guy, or do you want to par- partner with them and help defend? Or stay and, out of it. <laughs> or stay out of it. Uh, but there's like benefits to both, and you can uh, entirely go into a fight with the expectation, I'm going to lose this on purpose, but try to get all of my friends to join me, and then all of their ships die along, <laughs> right. along with me. Like, it's a very fun, like, deceptive... It's a heavy game. negotiation game. Heavy negotiation. Yeah. That's a great way of And variable it. player powers, so, like, the aliens are going to be wildly different. Yes. Like, one right. alien can be just, he can't die. Like, he just, he won't die. Anytime yeah, he loses a ship, it goes right back to his home planet. And another alien can be like... You can cheat as long as you don't get caught. You can literally <laughs> steal cards <laughs> unless great. you get caught. Like, they're wildly yeah. different abilities. But I love Cosmic Encounter 2. It's just outside of my top five. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. oh and do I need to go through my top? I'll yeah, go mine. And then we'll go to Max? Le- Leia, let's go through all yours first, okay. and then we'll go to Max. Yeah. Okay, so number two is uh, a game that I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there. It's going to come to Kickstarter in the summer. So oh, we, wow. We to preview this, and... Uh, I've played it twice, and it is number two all time because it was one of the best experiences I've we had, had playing a board. Great time with that. <laughs> it was. It's called Bloodstone, and it's from Bloodstone. a friend of ours called James Hudson, or named just called James Hudson. <laughs> named James Hudson. He is also uh, called James Hudson. <laughs> Skybound Games. Skybound right? Tabletop. Yep. Uh, and uh, yeah, they originally came out with their Kickstarter. Um, there was. A lot of love, but a lot, a lot of uh, critique as well for this game. And they listened, and they canceled their Kickstarter with yeah. the intention of improving it before the summer. It surpassed its fu- funding goal twofold, yeah. but they kind of figured, you know, when this is the best time to go back to the drawing board. We haven't made anything yet. Yeah. Even though we surpassed our funding goal, we've had a lot of critique, and we think we can make this better. Yeah. So let's let's nix it for now, and we'll come back in the summer with a better, improved game. So when this summer has it been like you know t- said yet? 
It, no, it hasn't been know. said yet. I really don't know. I, I read something. Well, actually, I was listening to an interview with him, and he said hopefully by the end of June. But yeah, in this day and age with, with COVID and shipping delays and trying to put out other games, yeah. it would not surprise me if it made it to fall Especially either. Especially in the shipping delays. He, yeah. he needs wood and gas, and we just don't have it. We don't it have right it, now. yeah. We're out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, but this game is like an arena game yeah. where you can play one to eight people cooperatively or competitively. Which is something I love. You can either play all free for all against each other on teams or my favorite way is there's these bosses that you just throw in and it's essentially a gladiator style mm-hmm. uh with like uh magic and you know uh, all these different traps things. and it's weird so things cool, yeah though. like it, it it's is, a dice chucker so it's not like the most strategic yeah. thing in the Explain world Explain what a dice chucker is cause... dice chuckers when you chuck a lot of dice yeah so D&D. Think, think yahtzee um, you have like five dice and it's you very roll. Different than Yahtzee. And, but uh, yes, maybe like two <laughs> of a kind and three of a kind mean certain different things, yeah. basically. Um, but yeah, Bloodstone's great. Imagine killing a giant boss monster, but that was me fighting with dice. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you, you've nailed it pretty much. Goodness. All right. Number one. The number one for me is very similar to a game on Max's list. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's called Zombicide Black Plague. And uh, I don't, I don't know your how how into video games have you been in your background? Decent. Decent. Uh, yeah. A lot. You heard of a game called Left for Dead? I uh, yeah yeah. I've I've not played it, but I've okay. watched walkthroughs on YouTube of it. Yeah. So like this game is essentially Left for Dead in board game style in my mind. But with like a Lord of the Rings, like theme, I guess. Oh, okay. So you start in uh, this city. You have to accomplish these certain tasks and get to the exit, which is with your team. Uh, and the entire time you're doing that, tons and tons of zombies are just spawning in, huh. and you got to fight your way through. And it's it is as close I think you can get to an experience of Dungeons and Dragons without just playing a role-playing game like Dungeons & Dragons, where if you want a lightweight introduction to that area, play Zombicide. It's a great, uh, like, you'll you'll have your healer, you'll have your wizard, you'll have your your guy who, who shoots bows and arrows, you'll have the guy who carries the big sword. That's Emily's favorite. She's the one who is in the front just swinging and killing oh, all these five people. Five foot one of her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that, that she's compensating a little bit. She's like wants to be the big heavy person. It's the fantasy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and you you, you work together. You have epic moments at the table uh, where you think that you're going to lose that person, but all of you rush back in to protect that, that player or... Uh, one person goes out in a blaze of glory so that everybody else can es- escape. It's a fun game. It's a great, great experience. Uh, we, we use the word experience a lot because I think the way we rate ours is based on times we've had the most fun playing yeah, those Yeah, experience games. is not experiments. Yeah. Yeah, experience. yeah, we don't necessarily think these are the best board games in the world. They're our favorite board games Absolutely. in the world. Yeah. So that was my top three. I've not played Zombicide yet. He hasn't played my favorite game. I should. Even though we have a You've not played my third favorite game, which I honestly don't recommend anybody that's listening to this probably play it, is Kingdom what? Death Monster. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Kingdom Death Monster is my third favorite game of all time, but it's ridiculous I just want to be expensive. the person who's responsible for naming these games, because it's like, <laughs> yeah. let, you know, there will be blood in Kingdom Death Monster. You might like the <laughs> number one game. is a pretty fun name. I like that one. Uh, Kingdom Death Monster is a... So... Yeah, it's weird. It was basically a miniature company that decided to get into board games. So they have very high quality miniatures, which are these plastic things that represent characters and monsters on the table. Little tiny statues, basically. And uh, Kingdom Death Monster is boutique horror is what they categorize it as. Um, So it's very uh, adult themed. It's very horror themed. um, And it's very expensive. (laughs) Very expensive. (laughs) Uh, the core game costs four hundred dollars retail, and then each expansion you're looking at another two hundred. I mean, the all in is thousands. Oh my god, it's ridiculous. <laughs> to be honest, I only have the core. Just so you know, don't think of me too poorly. Um, <laughs> Kingdom Death Monster is great, though. It's a, a kind of a game that you can never truly beat. Uh, you can go through, and it's a settlement game and a boss battler. So you have a settlement of people. And you will literally be recruiting new people in this dark world full of monsters. And you will also be like 
uh, having intimacy checks where you roll dice and see if you have twins or if you roll poorly both the man and female will die that were involved <laughs> in that like and that dwindles your settlement uh, and throughout that time you're going out and trying to harvest these monsters for their parts to make better equipment to make things that'll help you survive you're encountering events it's wild it's long i mean it, each session is hours and you will play the same campaign until your whole settlement dies which can take years if you really want it to um, but such a lovely game. I definitely want to int- lovely. That's a weird word to describe Kingdom Death Monster <laughs> with, but I definitely want Doolin to play that. It's a beautiful massacre. <laughs> That's a that is a good way to describe it. Yeah, that is great. Uh, second favorite game of all time, and even if you're not into board games, you may have heard of this one. Is Gloomhaven. Uh, this is the number one board game of all time according to Board Game Geek, which is the largest resource for board game stuff on the internet. And uh, definitely one of the most the best selling games of all time. Uh, the sequel to Gloomhaven called Frosthaven, uh, funded on Kickstarter last year, and was the most the most money ever raised by yeah. a board game yeah. with something along the lines of fourteen million or something like that. Uh, the number two was Kingdom Death Monster, um, actually. So, so they're you're just a pop, like you're just yeah, like, apparently like popular yeah. Game. To be fair, not many people backed Kingdom Death Monster. I think it was like three, but that was about $11 million. <laughs> um, <laughs> Gloomhaven is great. It's kind of <laughs> kind of reminds me of Dungeons & Dragons a little bit too, um, but it gives me that video game power trip. Like It's exactly what I wanted in a video game. It's a legacy campaign game, meaning you're going to be uh, only playing this game once. It's $125. You're going to play it one time, but you're going to play that over 60 sessions and two years if you really want to. You're going to be tearing cards up. You're going to be unlocking and opening new boxes that you hadn't seen at the time. You're going to be leveling up your characters, unlocking new classes, uh, finding new places on the map and new items and things to explore. And it's also just actually a generally good strategy game, too, because most of these games that do that well are those dice chuckers. The thematic games, the Ameritrash is what they call them, are dice chuckers for the most part. And so Gloomhaven does a really good job of giving you that fantasy power trip video game experience, but also making it a genuinely, like, it's a, it's a genuine strategy game. Like, it, you have to play it well or you're going to lose. Um, but I love Gloomhaven. Yeah. I've only played a very little bit of it. Yeah, we need you, to get... It's I cool. know. Yeah, you talk about me not playing your first game. You barely played any of mine. I played your number one a couple times. Twice. My number one is very similar to his number one. <laughs> uh, They're both made by the same company, which is Simon. Mine is Cthulhu Death May Die. Uh, this is that's a, that, these names. Just I knew you liked that yeah. one. Yeah, I knew you liked that one. It comes from it comes from one of Lovecraft's books, uh, in where he says, "In even something blah blah blah, and even death may die." I don't remember the exact quote off the top of my head, but um, this game is similar to Zombicide, but it's kind of backwards in the sense that in Zombicide. Um, you can play that game for hours, treating it like Left 4 Dead, just having fun destroying zombies. In Cthulhu, you are on like a timer, essentially. You have what's called an insanity track. And if you don't know anything about Cthulhu or Lovecraftian universe stuff, it's all about the cosmic horror and you can go insane and stuff like that. So if you do reach the end of that track, you're dead. So you're on a bit of a timer. But um, it's, it's funny, too. It's quite campy. Like, it reminds me of old school movies because... If you care about Cthulhu or anything, you you can't fight Cthulhu. Like you just die. Like he will just kill you. That's that's what Cthulhu does. But in Cthulhu Death May Die, you spawn Cthulhu and then you punch him in the face or shoot him in the head with a shotgun. Like you just have fun with it. It's it's wild and kooky, but I really like that game. It's it's another dice chucker. Yeah. You know, something you guys kind of have brought up um as I've listened to the three your top three games is oh, there seems to be a lot of influence from games like D and D, I guess, and mm-hmm. some islands. And I don't know if you guys, how much D and D you guys have played before. I've played a little bit in the past, not a whole lot, but that's it. I just, what I've just kind of noticed there seems to be like a lot of influence from that style. That's influenced the main thing that's different. I mean, yeah, there's, there is, there's a ton of similarities. The main thing that's different is just the, you know, with these games, it gives you a little bit more structure and yeah. you don't have to, uh, role play as much you get a character your character looks oh, this I still way role play at the table. <laughs> oh no absolutely we we both do i mean we have fun with it but the the freedom isn't there it gives you which is good and bad if you're someone who wants that freedom D D is going to be the best game for you if you're someone who lacks a little bit of the creative side or the desire to create a character and come up with a backstory then board games can kind of fill that hole 
and give you the character with the backstory already in place and kind of allow you to play it from there. I think it's a lot more approachable because D and D requires one person to be that dungeon master, or right. the guy who like comes up with the cool moments and, that's and it hard. describes it. Yeah. That's so difficult. Like, and that person needs months to like. We've both done it some. Yeah, and, and it's not easy. And I'm beginning to be drawn in way more into like the Gloomhaven or the like other games like this where you can get that experience and the the. The instructions do that for you. You don't have to do it instead. Yeah, D and D's great, but they do fill different niches, even if they're similar. I only played D and D because it gave me a reason to drink on a Tuesday. So just full <laughs> full transparency here. But. I mean, board games can do that too. It's yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, board game, yeah. Board game social club. Absolutely. Yeah, so it is the best way to make friends. I'd agree. Like you cannot hate that person across from you. Oh, when you can you depending on what game you've played. Well, that's fair. If it's if it's not cooperative, <laughs> if it's competitive, you might end you up might punch you, each other. Yeah, you. If you are really competitive and you're the person that flips the table, then maybe don't invite you anymore. <laughs> um. So, you guys have kind of ventured into this new hobby, and you guys were talking about your top three games, and you guys have lists coming out for your top twenties here. Um. I wanted to know here also for you guys. What would you, or kind of would you say to the people that are wanting to get into board games that want to start collecting? Like, what what kind of advice would you give to new collectors? So I think there's there's tons of great games, and I'm sure we'll mention a few. There's tons of really good games that are easy to get into, and none of the six we mentioned would be ones we recommend you start with. <laughs> uh, let's get that out of the way. Uh, but I think it's very important to know that no matter what games you play first and like or dislike, I know you said you did not like, uh, what was it again? I already forgot. Monopoly. Monopoly that's right. Yeah. Um, some people hate it. Some people love it, but there, there is a game for everybody. I sincerely believe the fact that there is Absolutely. a game for every single person. Every game is wildly different. There's tons of different ways to play things that are focused on and not, I mean, you've got, there's a whole new genre of games that have recently come out called roll and rights. And that's yeah. basically like, a, a solo game but you're playing it with other people like you're all given the same board and you just have to figure out your puzzle the most efficiently mm -hmm. but you're not actually interacting with anybody mm -hmm. um so that can be a game you can play by yourself and it's totally different than something like cosmic encounter where you're heavy negotiation heavy table talk so i think honestly find what you think would be fun if you're someone who thinks talking would be fun roll and rights probably aren't for you if you're someone who doesn't want to talk at the table, they might be something you should check out. So I'm sure we'll mention a few that are in particular, but I mean, that's one of my pieces of advice is just, what do you think you would like about board games? Cause there's a game for everyone. Yeah. And I think that's something that we didn't avoid at first, which was we just looked up the most popular board games and bought them and, well, and played them. And whereas like, I would highly recommend you if you have like a few that you really like, just look those up and even look up on YouTube because there are content creators who, who go through all of these games mm -hmm. for you yep. that will tell you like, oh, you like this game? Well, here's like five or six others to look at. Absolutely. And, and I, I like we have our favorite board game creators that we also watch all the time because mm -hmm. uh, on top of putting in, we also... <laughs> Uh, like we also consume. indulge and consume that content yeah, as well. and I, I think that the more people encourage that, the more uh, it's going to be easier to jump into the hobby without spending way too much money because board games are not cheap sometimes. Yeah, it's, some of them uh, can be, but the hobby as a whole is not. Yeah. So the one you were talking about, it's like $400 a pop. And then yeah. The other, it's like, yeah. But you can also get $10 board games that are amazing. 100%. I mean, there, there's it's a wide spectrum. Plastic is the expensive thing. I mean, you get into the miniatures games, and you you got to start paying more money. But yeah. you can you can stray away from that for your whole life if you don't care to try it out. So, speaking of miniatures, uh, Dylan, I know on the show you've also kind of highlighted a new <laughs> hobby you've kind of gotten into a little bit more with miniature painting and terrain yeah. painting. So, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, a little. I'll talk about it a little. Uh, I'm certainly not the best, but it is a lot of fun to do. Um, I I needed something to relax and do at home when Emily isn't there because uh, I have a day off in the week and whenever I'm not video editing I'm normally trying to paint some and it, it, it is just this relaxing fun thing to do because all of these miniature games come unpainted uh, and uh, that is actually I think 
they, done on purpose. Well, for one, it would be really expensive to paint all of them as well. Yeah, the games would cost so much more. Yes, but at the same time, there are so many people who enjoy doing it. So if you're like, I don't know if I would like it, just try it. Oh, it so is, many people will buy Kingdom Death Monster just for the miniatures. Yeah. I mean, not even to play the game. Mm-hmm. It is really fun. It, it's uh, it's There's a whole world out there of people who do it well and can teach you on youtube we are not them no <laughs> no but i will post some <laughs> oh yeah we will continue to we're we're above average but if you're wanting to learn how i appreciate that max probably you said i'm above i'm above average yeah I think. Okay. Mm-hmm. thank you maybe right. so much i'm not that i'm i'm gonna some, put that on my fridge okay max says i'm above average i'm not some train expert but it looks pretty good on from what i see i appreciate it if i if i was on there it'd look like some avant-garde art and just like start throwing paint on these things <laughs> some jackson like, pollock <laughs> yeah, just jackson. throw it at there's it there's a lot of tricks <laughs> that yeah. you can use like there's there's also are... just uh contrast paints make yeah you just put one coat on it. Shout out to Citadel Contrast. Shout paint. out to Contrast. Just paints. buy those, and every, it makes everything you paint look amazing. Yeah, it basically <laughs> like seeps into the crevices and is very thin, so it does like highlighting for you. Okay. So it's one coat, and you have low lights and highlights of a red or a purple or whatever you want to do. It does it does a lot of the work. I mean, it's not going to look competition winning, but what Doolin and I care about is just tabletop ready. Like if it looks good on the table. And it's more fun to play with that than a gray miniature. We've done our job. So the YouTube channel is called Table Knots. And as, as we start kind of winding down the show here a little bit more, um, we got to talk about where this show has been. Um, so you guys have been doing this now for about six months. Mm-hmm. And at this point, you guys have already gotten over a thousand subscribers, which maybe some people are like, almost oh, that's two. Two. Almost, almost two. two. Almost two. So some people who are listening are like they might be thinking ah oh, you know that's not like PewDiePie numbers but <laughs> no but close. but we're coming for you though. yeah <laughs> getting you heard it here first <laughs> Logan Paul <laughs> we're coming for the fight <laughs> but we uh but no I mean that's still awesome six months and you guys have gotten up to almost two thousand subscribers so I wanted to know what your feelings are about that and kind of at what point when you guys were looking at this like were you like oh, this is starting to take off. Like, we got something here. I think our our perspective is a hair different than other creators because, uh, and this is a, what spawned a lot of the desire for me to start creating, is that I, I do, I had a friend who used to live in Kentucky, just moved, his name's Jesse, but he, uh, when the pandemic hit, he was a videographer, but he's always been doing a little board game YouTube channel on the side. When the pandemic hit, videography was basically canceled. Yeah, no, work. no more weddings, no nothing, so he took this full time. Um, and I mean, he has over 25,000 subscribers. So he was a, a lot of an inspiration for us is like, wow, this can be a thing. People care to watch this. And of course, our own experience watching YouTube channels led us to that thought as well. But um, I don't think either of us expected to grow this quickly, but we knew it was possible. <laughs> uh, I think when we had first started talking about the channel, we talked about one year from now, like what, where do we want to be? I don't remember the exact max. numbers. I remember I Doolin said 400. 400. I, I think I said 1,000, maybe. I don't. It's been six months now. I don't really recall. But we're sitting at about 1,800 right now. Uh, it's definitely faster than I, I thought we'd have grown. Of course, we have a connection with Jesse and a couple other people in the community that have lifted us up and kind of given us a voice when we didn't have one. So that was super helpful. Um, but I don't know where we think it's going to go. No Who idea. knows? I. It's fun uh the video that you talked about where we did a thank you uh that really explains our feelings behind it a lot but it is one of those things where we just didn't expect this kind of love uh we're trying to get better to to earn the amount of like love that people keep giving us but the the thing that people keep saying will. that makes me really happy you don't think we'll ever earn it no probably not, probably not. <laughs> um but the thing that makes me happy is that most people comment and say, you guys fill the knit, feel, fill. You'll well, get there. Fill. Yep. Fill the niche, 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 niche <laughs> of, uh, yeah, I've your vowels are all over the place <laughs> yeah, today. Whatever. Um, we, we are the type that when you watch, you feel like you're in your game group. Uh, and that makes me happy because we weren't like the closest of friends before this. And I actually hated you. Yeah. No, yeah. Just... And board games made him love me. No. Uh, but through the process of this, we've, you, you can actually see our friendship grow. And Josh was there for the first part and I definitely leaned more on him, but as it's gone, it's just been this experience where I've become, uh, like 
Max is one of my closest friends now, and it's just one of those things where wish people, I could say the same. Hopefully, I gotta stop dogging you. Everybody's gonna hate me. Yeah, hey, so, that, there but, there can be like animosity between co-hosts and still make yeah. it work. There's the myth, not. Mythbusters made it work for a long time. That's true. <laughs> That's true. We might have to eventually, but at this yeah. point in time, no, we have a real good time. Yeah, I yeah. think that that I agree that the thing that makes us the most happy is people just say like, you know, it's not that we're not, it's not that we don't do a good job. It's not that we're not professional, but like keep the down to earth. Like I feel like I'm playing with friends kind of aesthetic yeah Yeah. like you you make us feel like we're playing board games at the same table with you you make it fun like there are people that do beautiful cinematography there are people that can teach games really well we are neither of those and (laughs) we don't need to be i mean we just want to have fun we get really excited about games we we like these big epic moments at the table and we just like to make people happy and so we may not fill the the best teacher in the world or the best painter in the world or anything like that. But what we do is just, I think make people realize that board games can be fun. Yeah. And I I think that reflecting on the success of the, the channel so far, a lot of that can maybe come from the fact that over the last year, you've not been able to hang out with your friends. You've Mm -hmm. not been able to get, get that. And so even if like this doesn't continue to grow at the pace it has, and we see it dwindle maybe a little bit. I, I, I'm I happy with the idea that we were able to provide that for some people while the pandemic was going on, and, and they got that feeling that they haven't been able to get for a while. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and kind of in that same regard, like I asked you guys uh, earlier, what advice would you give to people that are wanting to get into board game collecting? What kind of advice would you guys give to new content creators? Hmm. Just start, I think, is the the first and foremost one. We spent three weeks trying to figure out our name. We spent ages discussing what our first video were going to be. Still didn't figure it out. Got to the table, threw one on. It did okay. I mean, it's one of those things that you will learn what you want to do the more you practice. And you'll also just figure out what people want to see and what you think is fun. I mean, just because you want to do something doesn't necessarily mean people want to see it. Just because you do something doesn't necessarily mean it's fun. So I think it's just one of those things that you just need to start and figure out as you go. You don't have to come into this thing the most prepared. You don't have to have all the equipment. You can start with your phone camera. We're still using a phone camera. Granted, it's a a decent iPhone, but (laughs) you can start with a webcam and the two board games that you own and no mic except for the one included in the webcam and see if it's something you enjoy. You don't need to heavily invest. You don't need to really dive in deep into this without finding out if it's something you're actually going to like. And regardless of like what you're doing, uh, just don't be afraid to, to put it out there. Like I think yep. one of my biggest fears was, you know, this isn't going to be anything people enjoy. Like I don't know, there was a lot of uh, some some personal like thoughts of on myself and and on the channel itself. Like uh, that, oh no, this isn't something that'll ever take off like i i I don't have the ability to carry this or uh and even recently well you still don't but i'm here (laughs) you're so great such a great friend i'm over here just building you up no just um, get put him over man put him over (laughs) but i don't know like even recently i've been uh holding back asking a question of a of a bigger content creator for like three months and I finally did it, and the person responded within like ten minutes with the answer that I wanted. And it was just like that. I needed to get over the fear of, I guess, failure. Failure, yeah. And so, like, if if you're passionate about something and you want to dive into this, just just try it out. Like, don't don't let that inner part of you that is insecure like hold you back. Because once you join and once you start doing something, regardless of how how it takes off or not, like, you're gonna you're going to get some joy out of just producing something and being able to step back and be like, I made this, I did this and I put my best into it. And also just find a friend, whether that's you and me, like a real friend or whether that's a content creator friend, but just making a connection in the space that you realize you're not alone, whether it's, whether it be someone you're recording with or someone you talk to through the comments on their YouTube channel and develop a little bit of a relationship with just having a friend in the space. And this hobby is extremely welcoming and extremely friendly. It's not, I mean, they're, you know, they're dark sides to every hobby, but I mean, for the vast majority of the time, you're not going to get, you know, hate comments or negative comments, even if your video sucks and that's okay. But you might find someone that you're friends with and they can kind of help you and guide your hand. And even if they don't, 
you you've made a friend. I mean, that's the biggest thing. So what you're saying is you got a lot of friends in your corner. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You, you got us. We're your friends. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, good. Hey, it's been awesome to talk to you guys and just do this interview and just hear more about you guys, your passion, even with the studio hearing all the outside noise of downtown Versailles, we've heard fire trucks and speeding uh, race horse trucks and all that fun stuff. But um, it's been awesome just to talk to you guys about this and I'm appreciative of you guys coming on here and I just want to give these last couple seconds to you guys. Um, where can my listeners find you at? What's coming up with the, the channel right now you guys want to pitch? <laughs> so we're on YouTube at Table Knots and we're also on Instagram and Twitter if you want to follow us there. We post pictures and you know it's typical stuff all the time. It's knots like astronauts. Yeah. N-A-U-T-S. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, something you can look forward to if you're into the hobby at all is a week called Crime Week, which is happening very soon. Uh, I don't know when this podcast is going to go up, but uh, it, it will happen. Do we want to? It may have already happened. So yeah, yeah. You, you, it, it does, it end, of the, end of the month. Okay. Well, it, it'll probably be close to about the same time. Uh, either way, we're we're getting some publishers who have sent us some games to give away that we're also uh, going to show off on the channel. Uh, and so if uh, in partnership with that, we are asking people, and if you go and find those videos, to subscribe to other YouTube channels that we love and we best friends support. in the community. Yeah, and uh, for every 25, 50 subscribers that they get, we're going to give away more games. So. Uh, be on the lookout for that. And we have a lot of ga- we have a lot of games to give away, so don't let us down. Hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. We want to get them rid of them. Like Emily's, like these have to go away from my, from my house. Where am You're I going to sleep? Our closet. <laughs> Josh, get these off the bed. <laughs> All right, everyone, empty Josh's closet. <laughs> That's right. right. Check out Table Knots on YouTube. Um, really awesome content they're going over there, guys. It's been fun, and hopefully, we get to have you guys back on the podcast sometime soon. Yeah, we'll have Thanks to so check much. in once we've made it past the two-week window before we kill our channel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I told uh, I told them before they came on that I've, the other YouTubers I've had on have ended their show. So hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> we got to make it past that point first. <laughs> yeah. Then we'll be back. <laughs> All right. Till next time, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>